contracts. In his talk, he will share his personal story with the early Ethereum team and what got him to start on what he dubs the Oracle machine. Would you welcome him to the stage? Thank you for welcoming me here today. I'm going to talk about Eternity, the Oracle machine. First, a little bit about myself. As we heard before, I'm also called the Godfather of Ethereum because of my involvement in the creation of a color coins wallet in 2013, which we did together with Vitalik Buterin. And in this wallet, or for this wallet, we had frequent chats online, and in one of these chats, um, we essentially brainstormed about what we can do better with color coins or with master coin, and we came up, or actually me came up with the concept of having updatable algorithms on the blockchain, which Vitalik afterwards um, used to create Ethereum with. I also participated in the creation of a multi-signature wallet, which is especially secure, a browser wallet extension, which um, you can use um, inside the browser to send Dogecoins with and also web wallets for different other cryptocurrencies. Today I'm here as the founder of Eternity. And let's jump straight to one of the core problems of blockchain technology. We've got about 7.4 billion people on this planet. And um, yeah, they require lots of transactions. I'm not even counting the Internet of Things here, which will require a magnitude more of transactions. There are also existing problems with the governance and with the integration of real-world data into the blockchain and also um, privacy or confidentiality have not been sophisticately solved so far in existing technology. So we at Eternity, we say we have infinite transactions per second. How are we gonna do this? I'm gonna say in a bit, first a little bit about my team, about the team Eternity. There's Zach, who is doing the technical implementation as well as lots of ideas are him. This uh, there is also, and uh, he was working also for Augur before where he wrote the, um, or started writing their custom blockchain before they switched to Ethereum. Then there's Jack Pedersen who is um, an advisor for us, also wrote the white paper with us. And he was previously working for Cinereo where he wrote a language in to write smart contracts with. Um, we have also more team members. Um, Marion, who is doing marketing operations, she's also here today. She had experience in the Silicon Valley. And Nicola Stoyanov, who is a business, our business developer with multinational experience in the past on different continents. So what is Eternity? Eternity is a new blockchain for scalable smart contracts interfacing with real world data. The scalability gets solved through one of our core innovations here, the state channels, Turing complete state channels, which enable trustless off-chain smart contracts. So how does this work? When you open up a state channel, you do an on-blockchain transaction, yes, and you put in some value into this uh, state channel, and then you can transact with the counterparty an infinite amount of times, just limited by the speed of light, and usually, these smart contracts never touch the blockchain, only in case of settlement or in case one of the counterparties disappear, disappears, then it needs to be enforced by the blockchain. You publish the smart contract and the past date and the blockchain that, um, executes it and gets to the same result as if you had done everything on-chain. So this is very efficient. Here's a comparison. When we do everything on-chain, it does not scale. Really imagine you need to copy and store every single paper contract with everybody else in the world who writes paper contracts. It's simply impossible. With bits and bytes, we have less storage, yes, but still, it's too much data. And it's still useful for specific type of apps, especially the ones who require a global state and custom programmable tokens. Ethereum is a prime example. We also use Ethereum for this. 
Well, then in comparison to keeping uh, to leveraging state channels, it does scale. And as I said, the blockchain only gets used for settlement or disagreement, uh, settlement or enforcement in case of disagreement. The core blockchain stays very simple in this case, and it's also easier to write smart contracts in because you don't need to care that much about efficiency and about dependencies with other smart contracts. These smart contracts are essentially pure functions and can only interface with other data if explicitly declared so. One of the other core innovations which we have at Eternity is, or are the oracles. And the oracles are a way how the blockchain can see the outside world or how outside world data can be imported into the blockchain. So we also say that Eternity is a decentralized oracle in a similar way how Arbor or Gnosis works. Um, it's done with an on-chain prediction market and it works with everything which is of public interest and publicly known. It does not work for small little things, physical objects in between two parties which are not publicly known, but it works very well, for example, for betting on sports, for example, football games or elections, um, generally event contracts, prediction markets, insurances using better information for um, crops in Africa, for example, and also for financial derivatives you can import any data from public exchanges and create stable coins, CFDs, and yeah, many more. I hope maybe you have also ideas. Please come afterwards to us to talk. Also a very innovative or different, what we, or what we do differently here at um, Eternity is the consensus and the governance part. And the core question is, how do we make the right decisions together for the future of blockchain? So the consensus is, is a proof of work consensus. So we don't really think 100% proof of stake can work at all. But um, what's, what's super cool is that um, the mining algorithm is, is called Cuckoo Cycle by Trump. It can be done, it can be mined efficiently even on smartphones because this mining algorithm is used or is optimized for calculations inside um, uh, DRAM chips, so random access memory chips, which everybody already has in their pockets, so it can be mined with smartphones in Africa as well. Oh, the, the governance part. We feature here on-chain prediction markets, which essentially distill the information of the outside world to a number in order to determine certain variables of the blockchain, for example, the block size or the price of certain opcodes, or, for example, also uh, which software updates to pick for the future. So, um, what do we have right now? We have got a white paper, it's public on eternity.com. We've got a testnet, it's on GitHub. You can run a node, you can mine, and there are also state channels. And we started also deploying the first wallets for our pre-tokens, Ethereum wallets essentially. For, for example, for a giveaway on a conference two weeks ago in Berlin. So, yeah, in Q1 17, we launched successfully the testnet. We have got also an incoming announcement about the backing campaign, which will start at the end of March. There will be a security audit at the end of this year, and early next year, we hope to launch with the we will launch with the mainnet of our blockchain and become really accessible to the public, also with an app space, as we call it, a unified user experience for the user to access crypto apps. Please join us. We're active in more than 10 communities, Slack, Twitter, Telegram, QQ, WeChat. You name um, it. Yeah, you name it. <laughs> and for the backing campaign, here we've got an incoming announcement today. We have got a Liechtenstein company, which will do this um, token sale <laughs> or donation campaign. The start is the 31st of March and it will be an RSC20 token on Ethereum. It will be instantly tradable. And yeah, if you want, um, you can contribute in this backing campaign with Ether or also generally with your time. We also have an incoming announcement for the bounty campaign. I would like to end my talk with a quote of Steve Jobs. I'm an optimist in the sense that I believe humans are noble and honorable, and some of them are really smart. I have a very optimistic view of individuals. So why is this important here? He's essentially talking about decentralization. decentralization. He 
didn't really, probably he was not really aware of blockchain technology, but all what blockchain technology is and does in crypto in general is to provide tools to people to be more sovereign about their finances and about their identity and also to be able to prove that they had access to certain documents in the past. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, come to me afterwards. Bravo. What's the most uh, used or developed smart contract uh, platform currently? Like, who has the uh, most widely accepted and utilized smart contract uh, platform thus far? Today? Yes, application. Application. So Ethereum is the largest smart contract platform. I'm not really aware of any mainstream consumer-facing apps on top of Ethereum at the moment, if this is your question. Uh, in the past 10, 20 years, we built very reliable and resilient systems that are still centralized. And now we are in the process of building uh, a next generation of decentralized systems that must be even more resilient. Mm -hmm. But the debugging tools are not necessarily up to the task, mm -hmm. as it shows uh, the $50 million bounty that we just paid right. for debugging some smart contracts on the DAO. Right. Uh, so, uh, what are you doing in order to make sure that uh, your code is going to be uh, uh, not only smart, but also robust? So we planned out a security review for a couple of months by a Swiss company. And additionally, writing smart contracts is easier on Eternity because they are pure functions. They don't really interface with other smart contracts just in case you want it. And, um, well, you don't need to care that much about efficiency if the smart contract code doesn't get executed on the blockchain. And further, um, well, um, we will also spend some time on developing such debugging tools. As you said, your observation is totally correct. This ecosystem is still not mature. There will be lots of change. and. Um, we will see many more blockchain projects also coming up. I always say um, to find today a blockchain developer is like finding a web developer in 1993. Um, <laughs> in 10 years, probably half of all developers will be knowledgeable in blockchain and also cryptography. We have time for one more question. Yeah. Uh, um, thank you for your. Uh, presentation. I have a question about mining. You said you said you we can mine with a smartphone. Yeah. Uh, is it uh, because the difficulty is very low for now, or can we, or is it stay like that? Because the difficulty is low now. I'm sorry, I don't see you. The light is like. I am. Uh, uh, the you said we can mine with smartphone. Yeah. Is it because the difficulty of the, the network is low? So at the moment we don't have any difficulty because the public network is not live. Um, the idea behind the cuckoo cycle is that it's optimized for computations inside random access memory chips. So these chips are essentially already built assets which everybody has in their pockets. So you can mine without a um, magnitude loss of efficiency here and also the um, energy requirements are far lower. The limiting factor is the access to these chips. Thank you so much. Thank you.